It is a pleasure to introduce the first speaker of this afternoon session, Ivan Tomashish, and he will uh, he, from Queen Mary University of London. And uh, I mean, uh, he, he will present a topos theoretic view of difference algebra. So, Thomas, uh, Ivan, this is your. Thank you very much. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for their kind invitation. Uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, speak in this conference. Um, so let me start with a little uh, introduction to difference algebra because I understand it may not be familiar, uh, widely known. Um, so RIT uh, introduced difference algebra in the 1930s as the study of uh, rings and modules endowed with uh, uh, distinguished endomorphisms. And um, this was meant to be an abstract framework uh, in order to unify the previous uh, uh, studies of say recursions or uh, difference equations in the calculus of finite differences, various functional equations, uh, the study of algebra, algebras of functions on uh, dynamical systems, et cetera, et cetera. So I will uh, now, present a kind of writ style difference algebra in a more categorical way. So uh, if we start with an arbitrary category C, uh, we want to define the, the difference category uh, sigma C, uh, or maybe the better name would be the category of difference objects. So objects are pairs X comma sigma X, where X is just an object of C, and sigma x is an endomorphism of x. Um, a morphism of these, uh, of a pair of difference objects is simply a commutative diagram in C uh, like that. In other words, it's just an F, uh, a, 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 a morphism in C, which commutes with sigma x and sigma y. Um, in, in the uh, rest of the talk, I may refer to uh, sigma x as the difference operator on x. Um, okay, so typical examples that we'll use quite a lot in this talk are uh, different sets, which are just uh, pairs of a set together with a self map, um, a difference group, which is just a group with a group homomorphism, and so on, uh, difference rings. Um, and for a difference ring, uh, for a fixed difference ring, we can also consider the category of difference R modules. So um, now out of these categories, the most important and uh, the most interesting one, uh, once, once is the um, um, category of different sets because uh, as we observe here, it, it turns out to be a topos. So if you denote by underline N, the category associated with the additive monoid of natural numbers, then uh, different sets are nothing other than uh, actions for the additive monoid N, but you can also view them as um, pre-sheaves on uh, underline N op. And therefore, it becomes a Grotonic topos. Uh, people usually refer to this um, object, uh, especially when it's denoted BN, as the classifying topos of the monoid N. Let me um, tell you a little bit about the topos of different sets uh, as a topos. Uh, so being a Grotonic topos, it has a canonical uh, geometric morphism to set. Um, and somehow the global sections functor is uh, this functor, which I denote by fix, which simply corresponds to taking fixed points of uh, sigma on X. And uh, we have the natural forgetful functor from sigma sets to sets, which simply forgets the difference operator. And that turns out to be an inverse image of an essential point uh, into sigma sets. Uh, basically, this slide is you know, very well known and understood. Um, the only point of having it is to actually introduce the notation 
fix and the notation for the forgetful functor, which I will use quite a lot. So, uh, as already mentioned in a number of previous talks, a uh, good thing about a topos is that uh, it can serve as a universe for developing mathematics. So we kind of uh, redefine difference algebra to be the study of algebraic objects internal in the topos of different sets. Um, and uh, we study um, ordinary algebra in a slightly unusual universe, uh, which is a very nice feature for me, uh, you know, working a lot in difference algebra, you become um, sort of self-aware that it's a little bit esoteric or specialist subject, but viewing it this way, it uh, becomes just a normal uh, plain mathematics. Um, so indeed, viewed this way, the previous categories, uh, for example, sigma groups become groups, group objects in different sets, uh, sigma rings become ring object in different sets, and uh, if we fix a difference ring, then the category of our modules becomes the category of modules on a ringed topos. And you might ask, um, okay, so this is a rather trivial observation. Uh, why is this uh, any useful at all? Well, let me show you the immediate success story, uh, which is, you know, you can suddenly develop um, cohomological, uh, cohomological methods in difference algebra, which is an area which remained cohomology free for decades. So um, if you fix a difference ring, then the category of difference modules is monoidal closed uh, when you equip it with the, uh, the structure of internal HOM of difference modules, which comes from topos theory. Now, you know, in the, uh, uh, since the beginning of difference algebra, nobody actually detected that internal homes might be uh, useful. So it, it's immediately uh, kind of a new, uh, new way of, of seeing things. Uh, uh, now, of course, uh, another advantage is that in any uh, ringed Grotenik topos, uh, the category of modules is automatically abelian with enough injectives and in enough internal injectives. So you can immediately start developing uh, homological algebra and, you, and your cohomology is simply the topos uh, theoretic cohomology. So we view uh, cohomology of difference modules as an instance of topos cohomology. Uh, we can immediately uh, use the machinery of uh, X groups between um, difference modules and we have a cohomology defined uh, through the higher direct, uh, higher direct images of the um, global sections functor, uh, which uh, by the way, later I will denote fix. So to show you some concrete calculations, um, let's fix a difference ring and two uh, difference modules with M uh, et al. And that is a kind of technical condition, uh, which means that M is uh, uh, sort of projective uh, and um, it has a, a kind of good comparison with its sigma R twist. So then uh, you get that, for example, X1 is calculated as a sigma covariance of the internal HOM MN, and it vanishes above degree one. Uh, in particular, the derived functors of uh, fix are uh, very easy to compute. So in degree zero, as it should be, it's just sigma invariance uh, of the module, and uh, in degree one, it's sigma covariance, and then it vanishes uh, above one. So encouraged by this uh, uh, success of uh, uh, homological algebra, uh, we want to continue and uh, redevelop uh, uh, 
uh, difference algebraic geometry in a similar way. So we proclaim that difference algebraic geometry is going to be algebraic geometry, uh, relative algebraic geometry over the base topos of different sets. And <clears throat> the plan to uh, develop it is, uh, first of all, in kind of phase one, uh, pursue the development of algebraic geometry over an arbitrary base topos S, uh, starting of course with uh, Hakim's monograph and uh, reformulating when necessary uh, in, the, in terms of more contemporary uh, topos theory. So somehow um, Hakim basically uh, almost started uh, the concept of classifying topos uh, but uh, the theory has advanced incredibly uh, after that. Um, and then uh, while Hakim, uh, you know, went uh, up to a certain degree, uh, we want to uh, extend the work to include um, relative et al cohomology and relative et al fundamental groups and groupoids. And then uh, as a particular case in kind of phase two of uh, of the work, we specialize what we obtained over an arbitrary based topos to uh, different sets and um, interpret the results in, in the spirit of difference algebra. So, okay, as um, in any development of algebraic geometry, we start with uh, affine schemes. And um, they are given in this case by, uh, in the relative case, uh, as uh, Hakim spectra. So um, Hakim proved that the two inclusion uh, from uh, locally ringed toposes to ringed toposes admits a right adjoint, uh, which she calls a spec czar or Zariski spectrum. And um, to just explain qualitatively what it is, so for ringed topos SA, uh, the Zariski spectrum is uh, a locally ringed topos equipped with a structure morphism of ringed toposes, which we call pi czar, to the original uh, ringed topos. Uh, it's sort of universal localization of a ring, but um, that cannot be found in the same topos. You have to change the topos uh, in order to do that. So moreover, for any scheme topology tau, which for example may include Sariski, et al, flat, etc., using Hakim's techniques, uh, you can uh, define the tau spectrum, uh, which denoted by spec tau, and it's going to be um, a tau locally ringed uh, topos with a structure map to the original. Uh, uh, to the original ring topos. Now, uh, it's, it's really uh, uh, a kind of beautiful connection to Olivia's lectures uh, on uh, relative toposes uh, from, from uh, last week and her forthcoming work with Ricardo uh, on relative toposes. Uh, so I will kind of give, um, uh, I will attempt to give uh, a sketch of construction uh, in terms of this uh, forthcoming work. So if we choose uh, the site for the base topos uh, Cj, and we choose the relative uh, tau site over A, uh, that is going to be uh, a sort of indexed category or, or indexed site, uh, which is indexed as follows. So over U, the uh, index component over U is uh, the usual uh, tau uh, petite uh, uh, site over the spectrum of A of U. Uh, and then the uh, spec tau is constructed uh, as the topos of sheaves on a sort of a semi-direct product of these two uh, sites, uh, which is sort of uh, understood as, you know, J providing the horizontal topology 
and tau uh, providing the vertical topology. Uh, so, you know, people who heard uh, Olivia's last lecture uh, probably rem remember those uh, keywords. Okay, so um, before uh, Olivia and Ricardo's work, uh, the only way I could sort of fully understand Hakim's construction um, was um, by finding uh, suitable internal sites and then um, uh, picturing Hakim's construction as, as an externalization. So uh, let me give you an example. Um, say in the case of the risky spectrum, uh, Joyal and Tierney uh, a long time ago had uh, an idea that uh, the risky spectrum can be constructed using the internal frame of radical ideas. Um, so you can do that, you construct a, a kind of um, internal frame of radical ideas and gives you uh, internal coverage. And then the um, Sariski spectrum uh, becomes the topos of internal sheaves uh, uh, on this internal site AJ, which of course, um, using this familiar um, externalization procedure uh, can be written as the uh, topos of uh, uh, sheaves on this semi-direct product of um, the site with, with an internal site. And uh, this construction here appears, uh, for example, in Mordike's 86 paper, and um, it's also in the elephant. All right, now to more uh, general uh, schemes uh, obtained by gluing affine pieces. Uh, so for base ring topos SK, we define uh, this uh, object uh, kind of schemes over SK as the stack completion of the vibration given by this rule. So to um, an object U of S, it assigns uh, the category of schemes over uh, K of U. And Hakim then considers um, the fiber of this stack completion as the category of S schemes over K. Um, now, this, um, given an S scheme X, this is just uh, somehow gluing information. But uh, for, a for a given uh, scheme topology tau, we can uh, form a tau realization of X, uh, which we denote by X tau, um, as a, a tau locally ringed topos, together with these uh, structure maps, you know, to the uh, to topos S, but also with the global sections. Uh, the morphism to the category of sets. And um, we can now do some uh, tau uh, cohomology and relative tau cohomology. So if we choose um, an abelian group object M here in X tau, um, we can of course uh, take the higher direct images of the global sections functor and end up with uh, cohomology groups uh, here in, in set, which are just abelian groups, or you could uh, go this way and um, take uh, higher direct images of uh, along pi, and you end up with abelian groups in S. And somehow from the uh, internal uh, point of thinking, from the kind of relative point of thinking, uh, these objects should be rather interesting. But occasionally one actually wants to consider the uh, you know, total cohomology. Okay, so this is the, this is the setup. And um, uh, let me now speak of some concrete cases. So, um, over the Zariski topos, um, Hakim already uh, 
kind of dealt with the cohomology of quasi-coherent sheaves. And uh, in particular, uh, she has this result. So if you take uh, uh, a ring object in S and then uh, an, a mod, uh, an A module, uh, if you denote by X the um, affine scheme corresponding to A and M tilde is the induced um, module by, a, by M, then Hakim shows that um, the relative cohomology of M tilde vanishes in degrees uh, high, higher than zero. And you know, this is a, a relative analog of a famous theorem of Serre. So that's already kind of well understood. But we go a little bit further and uh, develop a tal relative et al cohomology. Um, and uh, somehow uh, we claim that uh, Kuma theory and Art and Schreier theory uh, work just as uh, anticipated. So um, working on the et al side of, of a relative scheme, uh, you have the uh, Kummer exact sequence involving the uh, uh, multiplicative group. Uh, uh -huh, I think there's a typo, this should be GM, uh, multiplicative group, and then uh, taking the nth power of an object and uh, uh, nth roots of unity, sheave, and uh, it is exact uh, in the et al. Uh, topos. And similarly, uh, the Art and Schreier uh, 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 sequence gives an exact sequence on the etal topos. And um, this is actually uh, not too difficult to see uh, if you immerse yourself into uh, Gavin Wraith's paper on generic Galois theory of local rings. Um, somehow it uh, just boils down to showing that certain uh, polynomials are separable. So in this case, the relevant polynomial is going to be x to the n minus a. Um, and you know, given that this is separable um, under the uh, conditions, uh, you somehow get that this is um, exact in the tal topos. Uh, right. <clears throat> and of course, <clears throat> from these uh, short exact sequences, you can then uh, obtain the, the long exact cohomology sequence and attempt to calculate uh, some of the terms. On to Galois theory now. Um, let me explain how to uh, sort of um, uh, produce a relative version of uh, Magid's uh, Galois theory of uh, separable ring extensions. Uh, and it's going to be done using uh, Yanelidze's categorical Galois theory. So we fix a base top of S and we consider an adjunction like so uh, of two functors um, where the uh, top category here is the opposite category of rings in S and uh, the bottom is the category of stone locales in S um, and by that I mean uh, just compact zero dimensional locales. And S is the Pierce spectrum functor, um, which to a ring A associates the locale uh, with frames uh, whose frame is that of ideals on the Boolean algebra of idempotence of A. Um, so we prove that it, this. Um, Functor has a right adjoint and we call it C. Um, so Yanelitz's Gower theory then tells you that if you take a morphism in A of relative Galois descent, uh, we obtain a, a P internal groupoid with object of objects S of X and object of morphisms S x cross x over y. Um, and this uh, p groupoid uh, 
induces an equivalence of categories between the category of um, split objects over Y, uh, which are split by F, and uh, the uh, P actions, the category of P actions of the P uh, group point, uh, gal F. So this uh, is sort of a relative version of Magid's separable gala theory for commutative rings. Um, somehow um, a difficult part uh, in, in, in this theory is to actually identify uh, morphisms of relative Galois descent, uh, in other words, uh, normal objects, uh, because the, 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 this type of theory doesn't uh, give you the uh, construction of normal closure of an object uh, like you have in, say, uh, the, the classical Galois theory of field extensions. Um, so um, that's why uh, we would like to kind of um, elevate this to the um, uh, uh, underlying toposis and use uh, Bunge's theory of uh, V-determined uh, toposis. So um, if X is a relative scheme, um, then the uh, proetal topos of X is a P-determined topos over S in the sense of Bunge. And then, um, uh, this um, fundamental P pushout construction gives you uh, everything you need, including the construction of uh, normal objects and um, in favorable conditions, in favorable circumstances, it agrees with uh, uh, Yanelidze's uh, theory. And uh, somehow if you have this, uh, a relative morphism uh, between um, uh, the top category and the bottom category, um, somehow uh, the point is that um, uh, Yanelidze's theory uses only the left adjunction um, and somehow uh, Bunge's theory uses the whole, the whole structure. Um, okay, so uh, that's, that's all I'm going to say about the kind of general uh, theory. Uh, and now uh, I'm kind of going on to the phase two where I specialize uh, to the um, difference case. So um, to start with, I'd like to give you uh, an explicit description of um, uh, spectra of a difference ring. So let A be a difference ring and choose a, a scheme topology. Um, I will um, denote by S tau uh, the classical uh, petit tau site of the spectrum of the underlying ring. So this is just the, the usual, the ordinary scheme. Uh, and we're looking at the classical tau site for that. And also the classical tau topos, uh, which we denote by kind of underlying X tau. Now, because the difference ring has the difference operator, that difference operator induces uh, a base change or pullback functor on the classical site. Um, the pair, so this data, the pair consisting of the classical tau site together with the base change functor actually defines an internal site in the category of uh, different sets. And the tau spectrum is the topos of internal sheaves on that internal site. Now, okay, this, I, I promised to make it explicit, but I didn't really make it explicit. I just gave you a recipe. However, um, we can make it more explicit. So explicitly, X tau is actually the category of uh, sigma equivariant sheaves on the classical tau topos. In other words, those uh, classical tau sheaves 
which are equipped with the morphism uh, from F to F um, composed with uh, the base change. And uh, you see this uh, sort of supports our premise um, that kind of M equivariant geometry Uh, it corresponds to uh, geometry over uh, the classifying topos of M. Um, so this, this is where we see the kind of equivariance. If you, if you did this for any other monoid, you would get um, some kind of um, equivariance conditions like that as well. Okay, so the uh, good thing is that our construction allows you to recover the original difference ring as the ring of global, uh, relative global sections of the structure sheet. Now, um, there have been lots of earlier attempts uh, in difference algebra to uh, define the spectrum of a difference ring, but um, uh, those constructions attempted to uh, create uh, a different spectrum as a um, uh, ringed topological space uh, where the, the topological space would be, say, the space of uh, different primes. Uh, but uh, the problem is that you may not have any uh, sigma prime ideals. Uh, so you won't be able to, occasionally you don't have sufficiently many points and you, you, can, you cannot recover the original ring. Um, so the, the, the point why, why this uh, uh, construction is successful is that you abandon the idea uh, that uh, the spectrum has to be um, a ringed space and uh, you know, we, we treat it as a ringed topos. Uh, or of course, you could also think of it as a ringed locale. Um, good. So, I promised um, an explicit ex uh, calculation of et al cohomology in a difference case. And uh, usually the, the first uh, result that uh, everyone proves is uh, et al cohomology of a field. And in this case, uh, we're going to show, uh, we're going to calculate the uh, et al cohomology of a difference field. Um, so uh, kind of, uh, the relative version of Hilbert 90 uh, tells us that um, H1 of the multiplicative group is uh, the Picard group, the, the difference Picard group, which in this case turns out to be the sigma coinvariance of the multiplicative group of the difference field. And uh, H2 of GM is uh, somehow the difference Brouwer group, which has a very uh, easy comparison to the um, Brouwer group of the underlying field, uh, and it's just the sigma invariance of, of the classical Brouwer group. And uh, using uh, Kummer theory with this information uh, gives you now that uh, the object we want to calculate, the um, cohomology of the field with um, kind of torsion uh, coefficients uh, in the roots of uh, unity uh, is sandwiched between some uh, rather interesting looking objects. Um, so the notation here means when, when sigma is upstairs as a superscript, this means sigma invariance. Uh, when it's like this, it means uh, sigma coinvariance. And then, um, when n is to the right, this means um, co-kernel of multiplication by n. And when it's to the left, it means kernel of multiplication by n. So, um, so you, can, you can do some explicit calculation. Um, all right, now uh, what about uh, Galois theory in the difference context? Well, if we attempted to use um, uh, grotendieck galois the uh, theory uh, for this purpose, uh, we encounter some uh, rather uh, difficult obstacles. 
Um, for example, a different scheme can be uh, topologically totally disconnected space, something like a Cantor set, and yet uh, it can be indecomposable as a difference object because the uh, difference uh, operator uh, may kind of uh, permute these components uh, in a sort of wild way. And um, so X may not have any uh, geometric points. Uh, in the difference context, geometric points correspond to uh, fixed points. And um, also there's a problem with the fact that the base topos of uh, different sets is not Boolean. Um, and uh, somehow Grotenig's Galois theory uh, relies very heavily on the fact that um, the, the notion of connectedness, uh, connected objects uh, is well behaved. Uh, and um, kind of this relies on, on the fact that you have a Boolean uh, based uh, topos. Um, so basically that kind of immediately uh, tells us that we cannot uh, go along that route, but we have to look to more um, general topos theoretic uh, uh, gala theories. And that <clears throat> perhaps we should anticipate to get uh, a kind of uh, locality groupoid uh, uh, as a kind of, uh, as, as an object rather than a group. So, all right, let me uh, first do the um, kind of uh, uh, Janelidze style or Magid style uh, difference Galois theory. So um, we, we let K bar be the separable closure of a difference ring K. And that simply means that the underlying ring uh, of K bar is the separable closure of the underlying ring of K in the sense of uh, Magid's uh, monograph. And in a recent uh, archive uh, uh, paper with uh, Michael Wibmer, we show that um, Janelitz's Galois theory applies to, to this context. And when you apply it to the discover uh, K bar to K, which uh, is of relative Galois descent, uh, you obtain a groupoid in uh, difference profinite sets. So you get a, a, a difference profinite groupoid, uh, which we call pi one uh, k k bar. Um, the separable closure is uh, not unique out, up to uh, isomorphism. Um, so for, for uh, rings, it is the case, but when you have this uh, difference operator, um, in the picture, uh, then uh, you can have non-isomorphic uh, separable closures. And that's why we include it as a part of the uh, notation. So, so this uh, difference uh, profinite groupoid uh, classifies the category of um, difference locally at all K algebras. Um, this is, um, um, a technical notion, which uh, maybe is not the best time to talk about, but essentially um, somehow component wise, so you can have totally disconnected space of components, but uh, over each component, you sort of have an ind et al um, object. Um, all right, now in, in forthcoming work, we uh, want to do, so this is more like a topological version. Uh, and uh, in the forthcoming work, we want to uh, uh, do, complete the picture and uh, do a locality version in the uh, determined context of, of Bunge that I already mentioned. Okay, so one thing to note is that if you have um, an object x sigma x in sigma uh, prof, so when you have a difference profinite space, it actually is a, uh, lives in the realm of topological dynamics. It's um, kind of topological space with 
a shift and somehow you can view it um, as a dynamical system. So uh, using this kind of observation, uh, we provide a connection of our difference Galois theory to symbolic dynamics in the following way. So in, you know, in a very special case, when K is a difference field, then uh, the fundamental groupoid uh, G is actually a difference profinite group. So it's just a profinite group with a continuous self map. And the Galois correspondence uh, restricts to um, an equivalence between these interesting subcategories. So on the left, we have a finitely sigma presented in the tau k algebras. Uh, and on the right, we have uh, subshifts of finite type with uh, continuous action of G. Um, and these objects uh, belong to, you know, the, the area of symbolic dynamics. And we observe that um, the algebraic, difference algebraic notion of limit degree corresponds to entropy of uh, these subshifts. Um, and uh, we kind of, um, wonder, uh, you know, when you actually take into account the kind of full thermodynamic formalism of uh, topological dynamics by Ruel, um, you know, what are the translations of other um, very interesting uh, kind of thermodynamic uh, notions into the um, uh, world of uh, difference algebra? But in any case, this shows that uh, uh, difference algebra, uh, you know, when you, when you give up connectedness assumptions and you work uh, completely arbitrarily like this, uh, it, it is going to be extremely rich and, and very difficult uh, because it includes uh, the whole symbolic dynamics. Okay, so... In the slide, uh, I'd like to talk about, I'd like to go back to uh, RIT. Uh, RIT not only uh, envisaged um, kind of the abstract formulation of difference algebra, but also of differential algebra, where um, the ring uh, is given with a uh, derivation. Uh, of course, you can also mix the two uh, uh, structures and you can have uh, difference differential rings and modules where, uh, you know, they're equipped with a difference op operator and a differential operator. So uh, with uh, my PhD student Antonino, um, we kind of um, describe the spectrum of a differential ring, um, starting with um, describing rather explicitly the uh, classifying topos for uh, the theory of local differential rings. So um, local differential rings um, are differential rings which are local and have a unique maximum ideal. And the unique maximum ideal uh, is also a differential ideal. Um, so um, we give um, we, we show that the construction of the uh, differential spectrum, if you use the Hakim Cole approach, and you know, uh, which uh, invariably uses uh, this classifying topos, um, this construction actually agrees uh, with the construction uh, using the locale of radical differential ideas. And um, this is very interesting because uh, these ideas uh, appeared in a Carafero paper from 1990. And so it's a, it's a very interesting connection. Um, the, um, th this um, classifying topos has been mentioned by Marta Bunge a long time ago, but uh, ha she hasn't uh, made, uh, made it explicit. Uh, now, I have to uh, emphasize that our construction of uh, differential spectrum 
uh, differs from um, previous uh, constructions of Kiger and Kovacic, uh, which attempt to do it again as a sort of uh, ringed space. And they use the space of differential primes. But again, the same problem, you might not have any uh, differential primes. And, and so um, you may not be able to recover the original differential ring, but uh, in our context, uh, this is uh, certainly uh, rectified. And um, okay, so that's the, the spectrum of the differential uh, ring. Now, um, what can we do about difference differential algebra? Well, uh, so Kiger showed us that um, you can consider it, it, uh, the, the theory of differential rings in an arbitrary topos is uh, pretty well behaved. And so we view difference differential rings as differential rings in the topos of different sets. And of course, um, we have the program to uh, basically repeat everything I've said uh, for the difference case uh, in the uh, difference differential case. Okay, so to conclude, um, why pursue this program? And you know, what's uh, interesting about these ideas? Well, the first point is that it sort of uh, provides you with um, an Ariadne's thread uh, principle in the sense that um, it gives you a template to adhere to. Um, usually when you're a researcher in difference algebra, uh, you often wonder what is a suitable generalization, what a suitable sigma analog of some classical concept or classical notion. And um, you, may you may be presented with several options and it's, it's not clear which, which is the correct one. Now, our approach provides a kind of definite uh, template through uh, topos theory. And uh, all you need to do is perform the, uh, you know, operations uh, uh, using topos theory and categorical logic and then interpret uh, what that actually means in the spirit of difference algebra. Now, of course, that's uh, far from easy. Uh, making uh, certain uh, topos theoretic uh, constructions and calculations explicit uh, and kind of also meaningful uh, in, in, a, in a different area uh, is, is not, not so easy. And, um, uh, requires actually, you know, very sophisticated um, technology from topos theory, which you might not think that you would need. Um, and then uh, there's a great um, capacity for generalizations. Uh, because of our motivation, we, you know, work over the base topos uh, of um, Bn, but uh, we can replace n by an arbitrary monoid or group or category um, to obtain the correspondent equivariant geometry. Um, and uh, this, uh, this may provide like um, an, a nice unifying um, uh, machinery to kind of uh, uh, formalize uh, equivariant uh, theories. Okay, um, that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for this talk.